Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what are my favorite theorems. As usually, my favorite theorems, right? So, a very biased point of view. Um, today, I would like to talk about a classification, um, namely the classification of plane symmetries, or in other words, the so called wallpaper groups. And it will turn out that there are 17 of these. So, the title today is What are the 17 wallpaper groups? And these groups have been studied for a long, long time without the mathematical terminology, because as you will see, actually, they appear throughout arts and uh, architecture and things like that. So um, they're really present in everyday life. All of you have seen them before, maybe not in the mathematical formulation. And the main point will be that it, it looks like there could be infinitely many of them. There could be, it could be infinitely many patterns. We'll see what it means. Um, but it turns out there are only 17. And all of them have been discovered by uh, humankind a long time before mathematicians classified them. That's a really nice story. Uh, so let me try to explain and let me just jump right into it. So I want to consider the following game. So I allow you to do four types of operations. A rotation, this one is here. Uh, a reflection operation, this one is here. A translation operation here, and a so-called glide reflection here. So glide reflection is really, you glide and then reflect. And the way to read those uh, four illustrations here is as follows. So I have a red starting configuration. Uh, then I apply my operation and I get a blue, uh, well, configuration. And that was basically my operation. And I, I illustrate you also if you apply it once more, then you get a green one. Then you apply it once more. We'll go to an explicit example in a second. Here, the green one actually is the red one. Why? Because if you reflect twice, you end it where you started. Pretty easy. So in, in this case here, some kind of reflection axis in the middle, and you reflect the shape over. So that's an operation you are allowed to do. You're allowed to reflect along a certain axis. Shape, shape red becomes shape blue. And you do it once more and becomes shape red again because well, it's a reflection. Here, the rotation has kind of a center of rotation and then an angle of rotation. So in this case, uh, the, the, the center somewhere here, and the, I rotate the red shape into the blue shape and once more into the green shape. And then we would do it once more, I would rotate it back into the red shape, which should tell you that um, my chosen angle here was 120 degrees. But I don't want you to have any restrictions on the angle. You could choose a priori any angle you want. Same here, you could choose any um, uh, reflection axis you want. Same for all the others. So choices are free. I only want you to, I only want to allow those four operations. And the third operation is the translation, and that's a really easy one. I mean, it's it's exactly what you think. You just fix a vector and you, you shift. Well, that was a fancy way of saying it. Um, you just shift your uh, uh, your pattern in a certain direction, just straight in a certain direction. In other words, you fix a vector and you, you, you push all points on your pattern along that vector. Um, the fourth operation is mildly more complicated. It's not really complicated, but it's mildly more complicated because it, it involves two operations, namely um, you glide, so you translate, and you reflect. And the standard, well, here, here's an example. So I go from here to here, and as you can see, I reflected, as you can see, because um, uh, those slopes are now the opposite. And then if you do it once more, you're right here. Um, and that's kind of, so glide reflection, you should basically think of foot step patterns because a foot step pattern is really a glide reflection. You have one foot step and you do the next here. And let's say you have something like this and then it goes like this, and like this, and like this. So this is this is the typical example of a glide reflection. In the picture down here, I just did it in the opposite direction, but, but that's perfectly fine. Again, basically, you are free to do everything you want. 
okay, I, that's rule one. Rule one is you're allowed to use those four operations, rotation, reflection, translation, and flat reflection. Okay, rule two is, well, whatever kind of operations you choose to do. So let's say you have chosen operation A and operation B here. As you can see, operation B is kind of a rotation so somewhere around here. Uh, this is a translation. Whatever you do, you choose a certain number of those operations. You always have to include the undo. You always have to include the undo operation. And you always have to include compositions of operations. That's what people would call, uh, you would like to have a group. So here would be a composition first A, which would get me to here. And then I would still uh, rotate roughly around this point and I would get to here. Okay. So my game still is you're free to choose your operations, but whatever kind of operations you choose, you have to include undo um, and composition. And the set of operations you're allowed to choose from are those four operations. So that's rotation, reflection, translation, and the light reflection. Okay, so sounds like a fair game. It, it, it still seems like you have plenty of options to do that. Two small restrictions because otherwise you really would have too many options. So um, the first one is kind of, so this is this one, and this is kind of, I don't want it to be too stupid. So I want you to include at least two linearly independent translations. That just means it should be a two-dimensional picture. In other words, the vectors you choose for uh, your translation, these vectors should be linear independent, like in the picture here on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, that's a restriction that kind of kills too many options. I would like you to choose kind of a minimal um, minimal distance for your translations. So you're not allowed to, to do some too small translations. Just choose a minimal distance, which in practice just means you can scale everything. And then anyways, we kind of choose a distance one for all translations. That doesn't sound too bad, right? You're, you're still allowed to choose uh, your operations from, from my, my this is rule three, from my, from my three, uh, from my four operations here you're uh, supposed to take the undo and the compositions with you and you're not to do some too stupid choices. So that's what I would call too stupid choices. So the first one doesn't give you a two dimensional picture and at the end we're interested in two dimensional symmetry patterns. And the second one, um, well, if, if you would be allowed to uh, translate arbitrary small, you can of course create arbitrary many never ever repeating patterns, then that's not what, what, what you want. And the main theorem is, and it's very surprising, you're still allowed to choose basically what you want, right? I never told you, you're only allowed to rotate along a certain angle or whatever. Um, and those things, those, those, your choices there called the wallpaper groups, the symmetry groups of the, of the plane basically, and there are exactly 17 of them. And that's the main theorem. It's a classification of those planar symmetry if you want, of the wallpaper groups. I will explain them in a second in a nice animation, or I'll show you how they look like usually, and you will recognize those because as I said, they appear in arts for hundreds of years, maybe for thousands of years. So the first ones, um, I'm not quite sure when, when the first ones were found, but, but certainly let, let's say in the Egyptian tombs, if you see the decorations on the walls, usually you see um, one of those groups turning up. We will see a few examples in a second. But basically they have some funny names. Here's P P3, this is P3, and you have a P4, this is P4, and they are built out of certain operations. Here you can see something like uh, you have a rotation, and a reflect rotation action. And this is how it look, would look like on patterns. We will see more of, of that in a second. But the point is, um, now that's a theorem, even it looks like you're allowed to choose so many things, but my, my two other rules actually restrict it down to you basically only have 17 choices up to the reasonable notion of equivalence, which is a pretty amazing theorem. 
So basically what it's saying is that there are only 17 uh, possible planar solutions. Yes, and as I, as I said, they appeared um, throughout history of arts and architecture and whatever. So uh, the most famous one is probably the Alhambra in, in Spain, in Granada, Spain. Um, if you never visited that, it's, 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 it, you should, it's really good. Um, uh, it's, a, it's kind of an old castle. It was built a long, long time ago. Um, I'm not saying all of the patterns you can find there nowadays, so this is one of them, um, are that old, but let's say they're at least 500 years old. So those patterns would uh, predate the classification theorem I just told you by about 500 years, say. So the classification theorem by now is roughly 120 years old. Um, and it's a little bit, a little bit depends how you count or whatever, and the, the literature is not completely consistent, but around 14 out of those 17 groups actually are visible in such patterns here in the Alhambra itself. Um, and it's, I mean, this pattern looks really, really symmetrical. It's very pleasant to the eye. It looks very familiar. So let me just show you more of those patterns. Okay. And it will be absolutely clear that you have seen those things before. And the main point is um, there are only 17 of them. Also, they look really different. They're, mathematically speaking, there are only 17 possible decorations of your wall, basically. So let me show you uh, the animation. So here's the animation. It's from a really lovely website that is linked down in the description if you want to play around with it. So basically, um, this is the setup. So you have those little rectangles. And the pattern in each rectangle is translated to the two directions that I forced you to choose. So you have two directions. In this case, the angle is a little bit boring. It's a 90 degrees angle, so we will change the angle here. Let's make the angle a little more interesting. Um, so as you can see, this empty, for now, empty white box is just shifted, translated along those angles. Uh, now I'm allowed to draw my favorite pattern in here, so my favorite wallpaper pattern, and then it's repeated. So let's say I have a line tool. Let's say I draw a line. Let's do a freehand in blue. So let's do something freehand in blue. So I'm just drawing here. And as you can see, it's repeated to all the other parts. Um, let me do an overall in, well, let's say red. Uh, here you go. So this is now the pattern I've chosen. And the first group would take that pattern and the P1. Yes, here are all the 17 groups. As I said, they have funny names, but it doesn't matter so much to have 17 of them. Takes this pattern and the first P1 is really boring. It just, it, I, forced, I forced you to choose at least two translations and P1 is exactly this minimal one. This has only those two translations. So I just translate that pattern all the way. And of course it looks very symmetric and depending on your starting pattern, you have seen it before, right? But you can do much more fancy things. So let's just click on P6. Ooh, P6 takes this pattern and does something pretty crazy. So there's some rotation involved, um, certainly translations and whatsoever, but it looks absolutely symmetrical. And yeah, it looks very familiar, right? In, in some sense, of course, it depended on my, uh, my, my chosen starting configuration. So let me go back. So th this funny drawing here and the, the rest is created by this symmetry group, one of the 17. Um, let's click on another one, let's the CMM. Ooh, this is also very funny. It almost looks like whatever an eye, a lot of eyes watching me. Uh, certainly you can see here now again, translations, they're always included, but I'm not quite sure what happens here. <laughs> anyway, so let's click on another one, P4G. Ah, again, to your eye, it certainly looks very familiar, right? So looks like um, some paintings from some Chinese porcelain or something like that. And there's no coincidence. Basically what this theorem tells you is um, up to your choice of starting pattern, I could have drawn something different and a few other choices like whatever the angle or whatever, there are only 17 such patterns, which is pretty amazing. So no wonder they reappear all the time, right? Um, so as I said, this website is amazing. I, I, I link to it in the description. It's a lot of fun to play around. Ooh, this is really nice um, with those with those patterns. And yeah, and 
again, the classification theorem tells you that there is only this finite number of possible patterns, but actually a very finite number, namely only 70. That's basically the state. Yeah, okay, that's all I wanted to say today. Um, so the 17 possible patterns for your wall, um, mathematical classification of those plane and symmetry groups, and a lot of nice things to play around with because, well, as you have seen, they really appear in throughout arts and throughout the history of humankind. So I hope to see you next time.